Hey everyone, it's Dr. Marcon. I'm just trying to finish up chapter 14 of the peripheral nervous system. Uh, we went over the cranial nerves and now we're going really quickly over the spinal nerves that will eventually make up the different nerve plexuses. Uh, so for spinal nerves, we have 31 pairs of spinal nerves, which contain thousands of nerve fibers. Uh, spinal nerves connect to the spinal cord and are named for point of issue from the spinal cord. So we have eight pairs of cervical nerves uh, coming from C1 um, through C7. We don't have a vertebral level C8, but um, this spinal nerve um, will actually go below the vertebral body of C7 because we don't have a C8. But everything above um, C8, the cranial nerves will actually travel above that um, vertebral body. So for example, C1 goes above C1, C2 goes over C1. Okay, um, and then at C8, we'll go below C7 because we don't have a C8. And then from then on, all the spinal nerves will go below uh, the vertebral level or the, uh, the, the vertebrae. Uh, um, so for example, T1, spinal nerve T1 will go below uh, the T1 vertebrae and so forth. So we have 12 pairs of thoracic, eight pairs of lumbar, five pairs of sacral nerves, and then one pair of coccygeal nerves. Here we can kind of see um, the spinal nerves from a posterior view. And we have the different plexuses uh, coming off of the spinal cord. Uh, we have the various enlargements, the cervical um, enlargement, uh, and the lumbar enlargement. These enlargements uh, basically are where the nerves are coming from that innervate either the upper limb uh, from the sumbar, cervical uh, enlargement and the nerves that will innervate the lower limb coming from the lumbar enlargement. Okay, And then we have our different nerve plexuses, uh, which we'll get into. So we talked about um, the spinal cord in the CNS chapter. Spinal nerves will connect to the spinal cord by the dorsal root and the ventral root. So we know that the dorsal root contains sensory fibers. And then the cell bodies um, are located in the dorsal root ganglion. So the dorsal roots we can identify because of this uh, enlargement or this dorsal root ganglion. Again, contains sensory fibers that will go up the spinal cord. Ventral root contains motor fibers uh, coming from the anterior gray column, and these fibers go down the spinal cord. I'm not going to get into the different ramas or rami. Um, know that the rami cumnicantes uh, leads to the sympathetic chain ganglia. Okay, and here, here we can see. Um, how we have sensory information coming from, for example, the skin and, and uh, through free nerves, endings, or sensory nerves. Uh, these will go up and then through the dorsal um, root going towards the uh, dorsal horn of the gray matter. And then that information will go up to the CNS where it will be processed and going to the integration centers. And then from there, um, motor signals will then be relayed down uh, via the uh, ventral horns and uh, through the ventral roots to the effector organs. And this just shows you how the spinal nerves um, and the Roma cuniconte's eventually form the uh, sympathetic uh, trunk ganglion. Um, I'm not going to talk about the innervation of the back. Um, what I am going to talk about, just um, going through the different nerve plexuses. I'm not going to get too detailed, um, but we do have a few nerve plexuses um, along the spinal cord. So a nerve plexus is a network of nerves. Uh, ventral rami, except for T2 and T12, will branch and join with one another to form nerve plexuses. So we have nerve plexuses in the cervical uh, brachial, lumbar, and sacral regions that primarily serve the limbs. Okay, and fibers from the ventral rami will crisscross. A cervical plexus is located deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, formed by ventral rami of first four cervical nerves, C1 to C4, and most are cutaneous nerve, though um, some innervate muscles of the anterior neck. The phrenic nerve is actually the most important nerve of the cervical plexus. 
So the phrenic nerve is important because it provides, um, so it innervates the diaphragm. So the phrenic nerve will go through, um, will run inferiorly through the thorax to the diaphragm, innervating the diaphragm, um, providing somatic motor and sensory innervation uh, to this most vital respiratory muscle. Um, if we have both phrenic nerves cut, uh, we could have a respiratory arrest. So again, the most important nerve of the cervical plexus, formed from fibers from C3, C4, and C5, innervates the diaphragm and helps with respiration. Um, so here we can see the ventral rami, and then here is the uh, phrenic nerve going down in fairly to, towards the diaphragm. The brachial plexus. The brachial plexus is so much fun to dissect, you guys, and I'm really sorry that you guys d didn't have that opportunity to look at the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus lies in the neck and the axilla, formed by the ventral rami of C5 and C8. Uh, the cores will then give rise to the main nerves of the upper limb, and unfortunately we can't go through all the nerves, so we used to have to draw out the, the brachial plexus and all the nerves. Um, coming from the brachial plexus. So uh, some of the nerves that we will talk about, we know we have the musculocutaneous nerve, uh, which is the main branch of the lateral cord. Remember when we actually were in lab, we saw this nerve pierce the caracobrachialis muscle. Um, so it innervates the biceps brachii and the brachialis. The median nerve, um, originating from both lateral and medial cords, innervates the anterior forearm muscles and the lateral palm. Uh, the ulnar nerve branches from the medial cord will innervate the intrinsic hand muscles and skin of the median hand. So here we can see from the brachial plexus, um, all the different nerves. Okay, and we know that the ulnar nerve is uh, more medial because the ulna is more medial. And then we have the radial nerve running laterally. And then um, we have the, uh, looks like the median nerve. I'm sorry. So yeah, this is the median nerve here. This is part of the ulnar nerve. Sorry, I can't see very well. Um, and then here is a, an anterior view of the uh, brachial plexus. So uh, the brachial plexus will then uh, further go from roots to trunks to um, the different uh, posterior and anterior divisions via the cords, so lateral, posterior, medial cords. You don't need to know this, um, just know that the brachial plexus provides innervation to the upper limb. I'm sorry that you didn't get to learn that. So radial nerve, continuation from the posterior cord, large branch of the pra uh, brachial plexus, will innervate muscles of the posterior upper limb because it actually runs posteriorly. The axillary nerve uh, innervates the deltoid muscle as well as teres minor. Okay, so here we can see uh, the different nerves um, of the brachial plexus. I'm not going to get into innervation. Uh, I just want you to, guys to know what the nerves are. The lumbar plexus arises from L1 to L4. Smaller branches will innervate the posterior abdominal wall and the psoas muscle. So main branches of the lumbar plexus um, will innervate the anterior thigh. So we have the femoral nerve, uh, which innervates the anterior thigh muscles, and the obturator nerve, which will innervate adductor muscles, Okay, which helps with adduction, ADD, adduction. Um, so that is towards the midline of the body. And then we remember our VAN um, for the femoral vessel. So V stands for vein, A stands for artery, N stands for nerve. Okay, so the nerve is the more lateral of those structures. Here we can see a picture um, of the lumbar plexus and the nerves uh, coming from the lumbar plexus. The sacral plexus arises, arises from the spinal nerves, L4 to um, S4 and is caudal to the lumbar plexus um, and often it's considered with the lumbar plexus so it forms the lumbosacral plexus. One of the most important nerves coming from the sacral plexus is the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is the largest nerve of the sacral plexus and actually is made up of two nerves in one, so sort of a two for one deal. So we have two nerves in one sheath. A sciatic nerve eventually will bifurcate and form the tibial nerve 
which innervates most of the posterior lower limb, and the common fibular or common peroneal nerve, which will uh, innervate muscles of the anterior lateral leg. And then we have uh, superior and inferior gluteal nerves, which will innervate the gluteal muscles, and the pudendal nerve, which innervates muscles of the perineum. It's this nerve that we often try to um, add some local anesthesia if we are doing uh, work anywhere near the perineum. Okay, so here we see um, major branches of the sacral classes. The most largest of them all is uh, this sciatic nerve, because uh, we all know what happens when we have impingement of the sciatic nerve, when we have radiculopathy, which is uh, tingling or some sort of neuropathy that goes down the leg. Um, now I'm really going to go into dermatomes. Um, know that a dermatome is an area of the skin that is innervated by a cutaneous branch. Cutaneous means towards the skin. A cutaneous branch of a single spinal nerve. Um, in the upper limb, the skin is supplied by nerves of the brachial plexus. In the lower limb, we have um, lumbar nerves on the anterior surface and sacral nerves on the posterior surface. What we need to know about the dermatomes, however, are disorders. Um, for example, shingles. Um, shingles is a disorder of the peripheral nervous system caused by the herpes zoster virus. Herpes zoster virus is part of the varicella zoster virus, which um, is the original virus that causes chicken pox. Okay? Now, once you receive chicken pox, the virus remains dormant in your system, and if it uh, emerges later in life, it becomes shingles. Um, and usually shingles occurs in patients that are immunocompromised um, or have underlying chronic conditions such as diabetes. My dad actually came down with shingles, um, I want to say like maybe less than 10 years ago, but I remember him saying that it was one of the most painful things he's ever gone through, but then that was before he passed kidney stones, so I think now it's an, a toss-up. But anyway, so shingles is a viral infection, stems from the varicella zoster virus, or now it's the herpes zoster virus, that causes chicken pox, often brought on by stress or underlying uh, things that might cause uh, your system to be immunocompromised. And it's mostly experienced by people over the age of 50. Other disorders include a migraine headache, relates to sensory innervation of the cerebral arteries, so arteries dilate and compress and irritate sensory nerve endings. Okay, so that's why when uh, we have a headache, we take uh, medications that will cause vasoconstriction to kind of um, ease up on the dilation um, causing the headache. Then we have peripheral neuropathy. This is a pathological condition of peripheral nerves. Um, symptoms of sensory nerve involvement include paresthesia. Uh, we talked about paresthesia earlier um, where we have a loss of sensation. Um, pain, burning, loss of sensation. Uh, and then we have symptoms of motor nerve involvement such as muscle weakness and paralysis. Causes of peripheral neuropathy include trauma, uh, repetitive use, or systemic disorders such as HIV, diabetes, and uh, vitamin B deficiency. Okay, so that is uh, the end of chapter 14 um, and of part 2 of the peripheral nervous system.